This is WVDA In Focus, a weekly program about events in the two Virginias. Good morning to you. I'm Eric Reed. Welcome to In Focus. It is January, and that means New Year's resolutions, which usually means trying to lose weight. And uh, if we listed every diet that was out there, the show would be over by the time I was still giving you the list of Scarsdale, Atkins, Stolman, South Beach, on and on and on. Well, there's a new one. It is called the POM Diet, and it was created by a local physician. Her name is Dr. Ayn Amjad. She has her practice in Beckley. She is from Beckley, and she lives in Beckley, and we are here to discuss all about the POM Diet and how you came up with this. Okay. Great to have you here. Thank you very much. Now, the first time I heard POM Diet, uh -huh. I immediately was thinking South Beach because of palm trees, but that's not at all what we're talking about. No, it um, has more to do with the portion sizes, and we use the palm as the example that if it can fit in your palm, it's a safe size, and so it kind of has a play on It's safe, on but it sounds like you go hungry. <laughs> <laughs> that's what most people think, but they'll be surprised after trying the portions of each food that you eat that you can be um, satisfied with just a small amount. And so, okay, so yeah. now I have heard of doctors saying that okay you should eat small portions but maybe eat more times a day eat smaller meals maybe five or six meals a day every three hours instead of the traditional breakfast lunch dinner yeah you're absolutely right and what we encourage people to do is eat three balanced meals breakfast lunch and dinner mm -hmm. and then snacks in between so that you don't overeat those meals so in essence you are getting about five to six meals a day um, a lot of people who only eat once a day never lose weight because they tend to slow down their metabolism if they only eat once a day so okay so the eating more will actually help you lose weight okay yes. So let's talk about how you even came up with this. What was the uh, the genesis for the thought of starting creating this? Okay. Uh, I have a lot of friends who've always been on diets. Atkins is a popular one, um, Nutrisystem, anything like sure. that. And even going through residency, I myself gained weight. Everyone gains weight just by the eating habits that we had. I work with a lady who taught diabetes education, and she's the one who was initially talking to people about portion sizes, which is where I got the little food examples from. And when I was playing with them, I was actually holding them in my hand, and I noticed that they fit in my palm. And that's when I got the idea that if this is really a size, instead of counting calories, carbs, points, mm -hmm. you can just visualize what the size is, and you're on a safety zone. So Ben and Jerry's, the size of your palm, not as good uh -huh. as maybe a steak, <laughs> the size of your palm. Yeah, yes, you're right. It's just, it's just the amount once again, too. So okay, well, you've brought some uh, things here, which uh, even in the uh, tubes, when we were kind of going like, this is supposed to represent sugar. Yes, this is sugar in a 20-ounce soda. So the bottles that, that you brought. Yes. The ones that you buy in the traditional machines that you see out there, which kids are chugging now and then, has this much um, sugar in it. A maximum amount a day that we're supposed to have is only really three-fourths of that. So, so if you drink one soda, you've already maxed out on the amount of sugar you're supposed to have that day. Now, obviously, that's processed sugar because we're talking into a manufactured product. What about if it's fruit? Fruit still has a lot of sugar, right. and that cu that question comes up a lot even today in the office. Was there a lady told me she eats fruit all day long? Is that still being on a diet? And it's not. It's still also the quantity. Uh, the apples you see in the stores nowadays that are this big that have been charged up with hormones is too big. The ones you would pick off a tree that's a normal size. It's a better sugar. The apples are being injected with hormones. A lot of them are processed really? now that they're super sized. Wow. The oranges and fruits. But it's still also the size. It's a better sugar than a piece of pie, so to speak. Right. But it still has sugar. It still has carbohydrates. It still has calories. And so, like and, and then it's harder to burn off, and then it becomes stored. Correct. All right. Now, what about fat? Because you hear things like on the Atkins diet, which mm -hmm. is all protein, no carbs, and then it puts you into something called ketosis, yes. which is supposed to help burn body fat. But Atkins really... You know, he was saying you could eat bacon, you can eat eggs, you can eat the yolk, you can use butter, mm -hmm. don't use margarine, use real products, don't use the processed stuff. But still, Atkins had quite a bit of fat, which had a lot of people concerned, but still they said it lowered cholesterol. So is fat as big a culprit as we think it is? 
I don't think so. And Atkins, you're right, they did do a study where they're trying to test the people on Atkins versus non-Atkins, and the cholesterol levels did not differ. Even though to most people it makes sense if you're eating more bacon and meat products, your cholesterol goes right. up. Fat is not as important as we think in that sense. It's still a total of calories we consume and the choices that we put in. So Atkins still has its good points that it limits your carb intake and so forth. I still don't agree with it totally, meaning I believe we need certain carbohydrates, right. but it's not as bad as it used but to be. But of course, thought. he has like the different phases. Yes. Like, you know, people will say Atkins, oh, there's no carbs, but really it's only for those first couple of weeks, and then it's like add some more stuff and yeah. see what your body can handle while you're still burning. Right, yeah. Now, you also have another tube there, which oh, you yeah. had the fat. Oh, yeah, this is first my of fat all. one, yeah. This is how much fat's in a cheeseburger. I mean, this is just a small cheeseburger that maybe you'd find in McDonald's, just the that regular That much fat, fat in that one yeah. cheeseburger. Yeah, uh, and it has about 700 calories. And the thing that's cool about these is this is what it really looks like in uh. your arteries. If you've ever seen them do a, a heart cath <laughs> yeah. or they show you pictures, it actually looks like Crisco in your arteries. Well, I have one so. of those George Foreman girls and the stuff that it comes, comes out, out of it. <laughs> no, it's amazing how much, you but know, that, and because when it congeals in the little tray uh -huh. after it drains this, off, that's, that's what, what it looks like. Yeah, it's and, really and that's quite what something. goes in, in your body, actually. So well, I'm depressed now. Yeah. And then we have this Snickers little Snickers bar. Yeah, that's for one Snickers bar. For one Snickers bar, just the regular size. That's how much sugar. So it's not as bad as a soft drink. No, but, but most people combine those together. If you see people snacking well, sure? on the run, <laughs> they eat a soda and a Snickers bar, and they and that just goes straight to your belly. I mean, sugar goes straight. Well, I'm glad you brought up belly, mm -hmm. because that brings up belly fat, which doctors are saying more and more and more is probably the most dangerous fat. But isn't fat fat, or does it really matter how you carry it on your body? It does. Um, they have a lot of proof now that shows our, our waist is indicative of our hypertension, diabetes risk, cardiovascular risk factor. And that's because the fat in the stomach, if you think about it, layers on top of each other. And that's where we get our insulin working against the fat cells. And the more layers things have to work against, the harder it is. So even if you might have fat on your arm or your legs, mm -hmm. the belly just keeps layering out and it makes it harder to do all those things. And as you get older, it then obviously gets tougher yes, to lose to it. Yes, to lose it, definitely. All right. Now, you also brought dinner, yeah. <laughs> or breakfast yeah. maybe, and it's a strange Sunday morning breakfast. Yeah. But we have broccoli, mm -hmm. you've got macaroni and cheese, and you've got baked beans. So mm -hmm. there's three interesting choices of food. Yeah. Obviously, one is much better than the other. What is the purpose of having these three together on this plate? Um, it, it's just to show the variety of food. Um, we use a small plate mm -hmm. like this. and. Uh, it oh, has it's the, a palm diet plate, yeah. actually, yes. And it has the portions. And um, the idea is to portion out our food. Nowadays, we have platters that are the big ones that you see, like at any of the restaurants well, that are big. Yeah. Super and we tend to fill those up. So this is to show, if you can't visualize it, it makes it easier that vegetables should always be the biggest portion. Um, whatever carbohydrates you're eating, whether it's right. mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese, should be a small portion. And then the protein, which is, in this case, beans or right. chicken, small. And that is just to show. That's true in a lot of countries so, where the yeah. vegetable is actually the big staple of the meal and the meat is almost like the side dish. Correct. And even anything fatty, they don't have a lot. That's for cost, too, reasons in a lot mm. of those places. But here, you know, you go to a restaurant, half the plate is strewn with mashed potatoes. You have a few pieces of broccoli soaked in butter and salt, and then you have a big piece of meat. It's, okay. it's completely overboard. When we come back, I want to talk more about the portion size, also more on the palm diet and the types of foods that are allowed because macaroni and cheese isn't really considered a diet food that's per se. True, that's true. And then, of course, you've got your little cookies, your and, pie. cookies and pie, which yeah. is fabulous if they weren't rubber. <laughs> but it makes for a nice display. And we'll continue with Dr. Anjad in just a moment when we continue talking about the palm diet.
Dr. Ayn Amjad is the creator, she is a Beckley physician, but she is the creator of the Palm Diet. It deals a lot with portion control, and she's good enough to join us here on In Focus this morning and discuss dieting and portion control and weight loss and all these things that we want to take care of at the beginning of the year. Now, you showed us our Palm Diet plate, which is all portioned out, mm -hmm. and you showed us the vegetables, carbs, protein, whether it's chicken or maybe beans. Yes. Black beans are a great food, they say. Sure. <laughs> so that's good for a protein. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize that beans, even though it's a carb, has a lot of good protein in it. Correct. So what are all foods allowed on this diet? Yes. And that's the biggest thing was to tell everyone that wants to join is that you can eat whatever you like. The problem with a lot of diet plans now is that people can't sustain them. They ask for you to do impossible things, meaning don't eat carbs, don't eat cookies, don't eat pasta. And as soon as you tell someone not to eat it, naturally well, you, you want to eat it. Yeah. Sure. So we, practicing your portions is one of the key phrases we, we say a lot in the clinic is that you need to practice eating small amounts, and that takes time to learn that. So. Now that's also kind of, I mean, and you're talking about the size of your palm, which is why we're talking palm diet, yeah. that the portion should be about. Nutrisystem, those other prepackaged things, uh -huh. all deal with portion control, mm -hmm. and they try to teach that, but this does it also where you don't have to buy prepackaged food, you can cook for yourself, yeah. and even at a restaurant you can yes. do stuff with this. Yeah. What we, when someone goes to a restaurant, I encourage them to ask for the takeout box. Go ahead and put half of your meal into it. Eat your meal. If you get home within that next hour and you're hungry, please eat it. But most likely you're not going to. Most likely by then it's already settled in your stomach and you're not hungry anymore. How many times a day would you recommend that people eat? F five to six times. Five to six times a, a meal like this? Correct. Yes. Which seems like a lot of food actually. It, it does. It, um, some people have a hard time even getting that in during the day, to be honest. But you do need, breakfast is still very important. I mm -hmm. mean, moms used to say that, dads used to, but that, that's truth to that. You have to eat breakfast every morning. And so. you were saying if you only ate one or t two meals a day, that actually hurts your metabolism. Eating more, smaller meals boosts your metabolism. Yes. Um, say, for instance, if um, you're going to only eat 1,200 calories a day, because that's a very small amount. Even if you sat there and ate all this in one time, mm -hmm. it's harder to digest it than it is to kind of trickle it in your body. Um, the body goes into a starvation mode where it says, I don't know when he's going to feed me next. <laughs> Let me hold My on to everything. I've never worried about no, that, no. But, um, but you notice that with people who always say, I only eat once a day, why don't I lose weight? And then someone who eats like a little bird, they're always skinny. There's Maybe that's the key, little bird. <laughs> yeah, not know, a big bird eating Not a big bird, food. not a big bird, yeah. But um, there is some truth to that, and I have some people to demonstrate it already. So. Now, one other, well, there's actually a number of factors that go into the palm diet. It's mm -hmm. not just portion control, and we leave it at that. Mm -hmm. You talk about supplements, mm -hmm. vitamin supplements, which mm -hmm. you actually help take care of at your office. Yes. Um, we do we do two injections of B12 and B6. We do those every three weeks, every two weeks for the first three months. Mm -hmm. And those have been known to help with energy and metabolism. Most of the energy drinks out there have B12 and B6. Uh, we, we do that for that short amount of time because it's a safety zone once again. After that time, if some people insist that they liked it, they felt better, we check blood levels. The vitamins that we give, I make them. They have two herbs in them that are used in other countries for diabetes, actually. Hmm. They're not amphetamines. There's no caffeine in them. They're not any of the diet pills on the market. They're safe to use. They are just used to curb um, carbohydrate cravings, so to speak. So they work that way. But I tell everyone they're 10%. 10% right. is my rule, meaning there's no magic pill or magic shot that makes anyone lose weight. If you don't watch what you eat or exercise, there's no such thing. So. With or without those, you can still lose weight is the biggest thing. Here. Right. Now, do you recommend exercise during this? Because there are some diets where they say exercise might make you hungrier. Um, I, I do. And what I've noticed is most people, I always mention it in the beginning, and some way halfway through, most people initiate it on their own because they start feeling better about themselves. When you throw exercise into someone who's already worried about weight and so forth, it's hard to get them started. Most people kind of bring it up on their own. But you have to exercise. There's no such thing. At least thing. take There's a no walk anything. 20, take 30 a walk, minutes a day, something. Play with dumbbells. Anything your body can do. There's no excuse just to sit all day long. So. Okay. Now, when you see other diets being advertised on television, whatever they may be, mm -hmm. do you get angry when you see you can lose this much weight in 30 days or this? Because obviously it sounds like you're talking.